Uh, so uh, welcome um, to Madison this evening. We're having a really important um, safety, very topical right now, very current um, issue that we're having in West Seattle. Um, you may have seen uh, fairly recently, I actually got pulled in to do this uh, and very uh, nervous that I was pulled in to do a story on King 5. The news is totally picking this up as well to um, see that you know we're, we're putting this out there for parents because we're just seeing a lot of raised, um, uh, a, a raise in the number of um, incidents in West Seattle involving students. So um, about two months ago, Kelly, um, our vice president in the back, uh, Kelly Kimball, and uh, the Cas uh, Lutheran is our secretary. We were we were thinking about you know what can we do for parents to kind of give some parent education and um, it was right in January when things started we started hearing things in the news we we had that robbery of the child at uh, 35th and Myrtle I believe all that started happening and, and we were thinking about doing something on cyberbullying and all, then all this started happening and we were like we this is a perfect opportunity for us to bring something into the school bring someone out from the police department, from parks, have our leadership here at the school speak to student safety. So um, we have, uh, we got, we definitely got on the news, I was on the radio, it's kind of all gotten mixed in here. Um, the, the new chief um, of police, or I guess she's not new much anymore, from Boston, was here also last week um, at the senior center doing kind of a community meeting and it got brought up at the community meeting as well. So it's a, a really hot topic for us. So thanks everybody for coming out. And um, I am going to um, just tell you a little bit about how we're gonna do the evening. So we'll, we'll start out with, um, with uh, our representative from the police department who I'll introduce. Um, we'll, he'll give you some, you know, we'll, he'll do some presentation and then we'll have time for <coughs> Q&A after that with, um, with um, um, on the police matters, and then um, we'll graduate over to Parks and Rec. Um, you know, as middle school parents, we are um, we're faced with our kids starting to kind of wanting to do things on their own, and we're not always with them anymore, taking them to the parks. So I wanted to bring someone in because my children, um, at about seventh grade, they started wanting to hang out at Hiawatha and hang, hang out by their you know by themselves with other friends and no parents. So that I think is a, a very um, important thing for you guys to you know, help your students learn how to take care of themselves out in the public. And then we'll end the, you know, and, we'll, and we'll do a Q&A as well um, with Marlon, and then we'll bring in from the school perspective, and um, we can talk about you know, really anything safety oriented within the school or on the school grounds, including traffic and buses and all that sort of thing. So we'll go through those three things. We do have a very short, maybe 10 minute quick, important PTA piece of business that we need to do at the very, very end. So if at least a few of you can stick around for that, I would really appreciate it because we do have to appoint our budget committee. It's a, an official thing we have to do, um, but uh, we, we'd love to have you hang out for that as well, but I promise it will only take a couple minutes. So without further ado, um, let me introduce uh, Mark Solomon. Uh, Mark is from the um, uh, Seattle Police Department. He is the crime prevention coordinator for both the South and the Southwest precinct. And uh, Mark actually has brought uh, a few handouts as well to, to take home, so be sure to get those on your way out. And we'll post those on the uh, PTA website as well if you uh, don't pick them up this evening. So thank you again for coming, Mark, and take it away. Right, thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Mark Solomon. I am a crime prevention coordinator with the Seattle Police Department. Um, and I'm here tonight to basically give you as much information as I can that I'm able to about some of the incidents that have been happening and respond to any questions or concerns that you all may have. So I feel, you know, this is your meeting. I'm here as a resource, so you know, please feel free to ask questions uh, and you know, let me know what your concern is. Um, I have looked at all the robbery reports for the Southwest Precinct since the beginning of the school year. And I've come across about 17 instances where youth were the target of these robberies. Uh, in most cases, what's been taken from the youth have been cell phones. Uh, some backpacks that had laptops in them, uh, but more often than not, it's been cell phones. More often than not, the people who are committing these crimes against our youth are other youth. So basically we have teens robbing teens 
of their personal belongings. Some of them happened on the way to school, some on the way away from school, uh, some just out in the community. But again, we're looking at uh, instances of teens you know, stealing from other teens. And in some cases, the teens know the people that have committed the crimes. They may have either gone to their school or were former students at that school. Uh, but from the descriptions, we're seeing a lot of the perpetrators have been teens themselves. In terms of you know, how they're being approached, sometimes you know, the kids just rush up to another kid and grab the phone or come up and ask, hey, do you know what time it is? And the person pulls out the phone and then they snap. Or then there's classic, you know, give me all your stuff. And those seem to be you know, how these things are perpetrated. We have had reports or, of young people being reluctant to say anything about what's happened to them because they're afraid of being retaliated against by the person who committed the crime. So that's led to some delayed reporting. So maybe a day you know, or several hours later, we get the robbery report because the young person's been afraid to come forward. In terms of one of the things we encourage is when people are out and about, and this applies to everyone and not just teens, hang up, put the phone away. It presents a target, and at the same time, if you are paying attention to what's going on with your phone, walking down the street texting, which in some cases that's what the person was doing, you're not aware of who's around you or what's going on around you. So even in robberies where you know adults have had their cell phones taken, it's more often than not they've got the phone out, they're talking on the phone, they're listening to... Uh, they're, you know, they listen to the phone on their earbuds, and they're not aware of who's around them or what's going on. Okay. So that's why I say, when you're out and about, put the phone away. Maintain positive control over your stuff. Look around. Pay attention to who's around you and what's going on around you. Try not to be distracted. And if something does happen, tell somebody. Do not be afraid to report, because the sooner that the report is made, the sooner that we can respond. There are, there, I also wanted to point out that there have been some arrests made in some of these cases, and it looks like there are a couple of folks that we've been able to connect to some of these robberies. Now, as a result, we've actually seen some of these robberies decrease in recent weeks. Around the beginning of the uh, calendar year, there are many more incidents. That has since you know, trickled off. Uh, so you know, that's good news. We're, you know, we are making arrests. We're making arrests not only the people who are committing street robberies, but as well as people who are committing uh, robberies against businesses. So we've done a number of arrests. A number of people have been identified. And that's been a great help. But we still want to emphasize to folks you know, be vigilant, pay attention to your surroundings, and try not to have yourself distracted. One thing I also want to point out is of great benefit has been that adults in the community have been very helpful in assisting those teens who have been victimized by robbery. You know, coming to their aid uh, by showing up, they've chased, you know, some of these robbers away. Uh, by you know, helping them make a report or by providing a safe haven for that young person to be able to make that phone call or get a hold of a parent or teacher and them getting in touch with us so that report can be made. So we definitely want to thank the adult members of the community who have been vigilant and are assisting our youth. Okay. And we definitely want to encourage you to do that. So it comes back to, you know, as community members, when we see something that doesn't look right, let's say something. Let's be those, you know, you know, you hear the phrase, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Let's be those villagers, right? So that's briefly in a nutshell. Questions, please. Yes, sir.
think I, I'm glad you brought that up. One of the things that uh, Captain Wilski did, or now Assistant Chief Wilski did, was when this pattern started to emerge, he directed patrol officers to be in and around the areas of the schools and the and transit corridors uh, during uh, the morning commute as well as after school lets out. Uh, so there has been an increased emphasis uh, getting patrols, particularly around uh, the West Seattle High area and you know this campus up here, as well as the uh, Denny International South Campus uh, <coughs> further south, as well and in the, in the um, uh, Westwood Village area. So that has been an emphasis to get officers in the area when you know kids are going to and from school, and that is something that's continuing. Uh, it may not be as rigorous as it once was, but it's still a continued emphasis. Yes, sir. Um, I have two questions. Uh, could you shed some light on the Good Samaritan laws that apply when and you said you know when an adult sees something happen, uh, they should do something? What are the good? What are acceptable? The best thing that anybody can do, or any adult can do, is if they see something, let it be known that they see that situation. If it's simply as simple as, hey, what are you doing? Okay, that alerts the person who's you know, being confronted, that lets the person know that, hey, somebody's you know, got their eyes on me. It also lets the people know who are committing that crime that, oh, I've been seen. Now people can identify me. So again, just doing that quick, hey, what are you doing? You know, stop, call the police, that helps. Okay. We don't want people uh, chasing down suspects, uh, confronting them, you know, don't go tackling people, right? Uh, but again, just being present in many ways will deter a lot of that negative activity. As a follow up to that, do these teams realize the ones they do arrest, do they realize the consequences of being, you know, they're teens, so they're pre the legal limit or the legal age, or maybe juvenile court. Do they realize the consequences long term of what they're, what's going to show up in their record? Um, or is there a need for educating the kids on that regard? Because I do feel there is a need to educate kids about that. I also feel that there are some kids who have committed, or I wouldn't, and I'm not just going to say kids. There are individuals who realize there are penalties and don't care. They commit the crimes anyway. Um, you know, when we look at you know individuals who are teenagers but have committed multiple felonies, such as robberies, and we're arresting them on robbery warrants, uh, as in the case of some of these, it's like, what don't you get about this? <laughs> you know, your your future's gone. So, again, whether they're an adult or a child. Uh, the realization that there are consequences and repercussions, sometimes it just doesn't track for folks. Yes? Sir. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we're talking about teens on teens here, so to speak. Uh, there's also been, I mean, I've lived out of here for quite a while, there's also been the soccer issues, uh, the flashers, yeah. you know, that, so talk about a little, if you would, um, what we're doing about, and I'm not, I'm not minimizing, I mean, I'm a parent of twin girls, you know, so I'm a little protective. Uh, and I'm not minimizing, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm minimizing the kid on the kids stealing their cell phone things, right? Yeah. But, you know, if you follow a blog, and most of us do in here, and, and you know what's going on in West Seattle, there, there's, I mean, the flashes of West Side School, there's, you know, and, and to me, I mean, if I'm going to categorize a danger, you know, I'm going to rape the flash or somebody that's ripping his pants off when the car door open and what he could possibly do yeah. long term. I'm going to rape that more dangerous in my mind than I, and, and again, I don't want to minimize that, you know, the juvenile that, that, that's heading down the wrong path <laughs> at 15 either. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, maybe talk about it. Virtually, I haven't heard anything on anything like that lately, but you know, for a while there, in the last, uh, I don't know, 12 to 18 months, you know, a lot of instances pretty close to here yeah. um, with adult perpetrators, right. if you want to call it that. So maybe, you know, and, and I'm, I'm glad.
glad you raised that because, we, you know, while I did say that a lot of what I saw in terms of the robberies, you know, was teen on teen, there are so there are, have also been adults who have perpetrated some robberies as well. Uh, so I don't just want to say, you know, be cautious of every teenager that you see out there, because again, there are, there are folks out there that are doing robberies, and their age ranges, you know, go from like. 15 to 40, you know, to 50. Right. Uh, he just got killed in Cleveland two nights ago, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, that, to me, yeah. that is, that is, when I see that, I mean, there's a girl fight in Cleveland, it's two miles away from here, whatever, right? Three miles. And I understand it's a whole different neighborhood, and I, um, but, you know, you get pretty protective of your west side over here, right? Especially our, our little North Admiral district here, right. where we're all proud to live. tell you that uh, with regard to uh, those who are exposing themselves to um, you know high school age elementary school age kids that was definitely a high priority for us to you know again be in and around those transit corridors be on the lookout you know for you know the vehicles that were described the individuals you know that were described you know to again you know robbery yeah that's a it's a crime of violence um, you know some of our kids got hurt you know, as a result of those, uh, they've been threatened, you know, beat up, and those are serious. But then again, so is someone exposing themselves, you know, and <coughs> well, absolutely a high priority for us to address. Yeah. Those kids doing that now, are they, 10 years from now, they're going to be the adults that are doing it now, you know, I mean, so, uh, I just, I think that it's very reassuring to say, hey, you're paying attention to that. Stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. We definitely are. And again, that's where I come back to, you know, adults in the community, you know, keep their eyes open and if they're seeing something that doesn't look right or something suspicious, you see a particular vehicle that's hanging out, you know, you know watching kids going back and forth and going, that really kind of seems out of place. That seems kind of odd. And it gets back to, you know, folks knowing their neighborhood, you know, knowing what's normal for your community, knowing what's normal, you know, in and around your school. And if you see something that doesn't quite fit, you know, makes the hairs on the back of your neck go up going, hmm, maybe I ought to be paying better attention to that. And it's something that I, you know, talk about quite often, you know, when I'm talking about block watch and neighbors engaging with each other. Use the customer service approach. When you see each other and you see your neighbors on the street that you recognize, wave and say hi. You see people you don't know, wave and say hi. Let them know that you see them, that you're paying attention, that you are aware of their presence. Again, that visibility, that awareness, and that and communicating that message that you are aware of those folks is going to deter a lot of negative behavior. Yes. Again, it comes down to you know paying attention, knowing where you're at, knowing your route, and knowing a safe place that you go. Okay. An example would be uh, just thinking about this community up here. Uh, someone feels that you know your person feels they're being followed by somebody. Go, duck into the community center and say, "Hey, I this I'm not feeling safe." You know, maybe we're at one of the stores. Pop in a safe way. Well, didn't they go you know, to McDonald's? I'm not feeling safe. Yes. So, is there a training at McDonald's that says, hey, you're a kid-friendly place, and you're near a school, you got to step up. And he didn't feel safe there, or she didn't, right? She. She. We got the full message from the school about it. Yeah, Everybody I don't, yeah, it. I don't think it was, I, I think she got, a, a, whoever was, went into McDonald's and was still being hassled and didn't. And then left and came all the way. It ran here. And my That's question. 
And my question was, is, is there some obligation to some of these restaurants that, I, you know, are there's they getting some, training from the police that you need to be a safe place? There are some, there are some businesses uh, that are designated as a safe place for kids. And there is a national program about safe place for right. kids. Not everyone is, you know, is on that. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone, everyone has received training on that. Mm -hmm. But my message is, don't just wait for a safe place, you know, or some of a, a place that has signs in the window saying we're a safe place. Mm -hmm. Go to any place where there's adults, and lots of adults, responsible adults, that you can say, hey, I don't feel safe. Call the police for me, or call my mom, something. You know? Anywhere where there's gonna be multiple people, multiple witnesses, uh, multiple uh, allies, if you will. I think it's better than just saying, oh, I'm just being paranoid, I'm, you know, they're probably not gonna do anything to me. If you feel uncomfortable, get to some place where there's other people and let people know that you're concerned about your safety. Yes? Really briefly, with regards to that, I live in a little part of town, and what we have been hearing is, you know, tell the kids, go to the safe base. I would say, yeah, again, wherever they can go. Sure. Um, a store, library, you know, fire station, uh, even a metro bus, because the buses are designated safe places for kids. So tell the bus driver. The bus driver has a radio. And there's cameras on the bus. Yeah. So the perpetrators um, regarding the robbery, robberies lately, are they teenagers mostly? Uh, most of them, a lot of them have been teens, yeah. And are those kids who go to the schools around here? Some have been, yeah. Either went to the school or recently went to that school, but they're in that high school age range. Okay. Again, not all of them, but a number of them have been. What's the male-female ratio? Uh, we've seen both uh, male uh, suspects as well as female suspects. Tends to go towards the male side, but we have seen robberies that have been perpetrated by two or three females on both adult males and adult females, as well as on teens. Potential allies are going to be in an alley, in an alley, as opposed to on a main track. I also did have a question because I I did read at least briefly on the blog about uh, parents at Denny Middle School mm -hmm. organizing some kind of safety training. And, yeah. And I don't uh, I don't know what you can share about that. What you know about that? Also. Yeah. As a matter of fact. Um, I and a couple of our community police team officers met with uh, one of Denny's assistant principals yesterday to talk about how we can foster neighborhood engagement, get more parents involved to be those, uh, I guess you could say almost neighborhood stewards, or again, having those caring adult eyes you know, in and around the school as kids are going to and from to ensure safe passage. So you know, maybe it's, uh, the homes that are right around the school, you know, forming a block watch in conjunction with the school so that they're being watchful. Okay? Maybe it's engaging the parents of the students 
that are going to that school to maybe volunteer every now and then just to, you know, stand on a particular corner or stand in a particular stairwell, just so they again there's an adult presence, so that you know youth see them, and hopefully most youth are going to feel safe, and those youth or those individuals who are looking at doing something less than honorable know that there's a set of eyes you know looking at them. Uh, we even talked a little bit about you know, the possibility of a walking school bus. You know. So that's something that uh, we're going to be working with Denny going forward, and maybe that's something that we can look at you know, exploring here. Uh, I know that we have a number of block watches in this general community. Maybe we look at activating those block watches to pay more attention to the schools and more attention to the students that are going to and from school, just so that, you know, the young people and the parents have a sense that, hey, the neighborhood is taking your safety seriously. So, Julie, that's a, I mean, that's a great segue into, you know, kind of starting to think about um, that whole security, you know, paid security. I think it's the PTA that's trying to raise funds. That's what I at least heard. It's all hearsay at this point, but trying to raise funds to hire security officers. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you to me, I thought they were raising money for safety vests and to pay for training for, for volunteers. volunteers? Oh, okay. I, I thought okay. it was all volunteer. Okay. Yeah, the, what we were talking about with the folks at Denny was volunteers and providing some training as to, you know, do's and don'ts, you know, what are, what, you know, we, it is not our expectation that, you know, the parents are going to be mobilized <coughs> into a uh, security force. <laughs> Yeah. We're really talking about, again, having a presence, you know, and doing some education about here's how you report crime. You know, here's the kind of things that we need to know. Uh, you know, and if you're seeing something that doesn't look right, again, communicate that quickly and you can, with some guidelines as to here's what our folks need to know so they can respond properly. So, but again, we're not talking about doing any kind of patrolling the streets with baseball bats and flashlights <laughs> or nothing like that. I know the school has a safety committee, Dr. Gary, is that right? Yes, it is. Safety committee. And I know that, um, have, have you guys all heard about the walkabout program? Um, it's, it's, Laura might speak to that when we get into the school um, part of the presentation. But, um, you know, if you think about, you know, having a walkabout internally at school, in the halls, in the stairwells, and bringing that out, you know, maybe that's something we should think about it. I know that we have a little bit of a hard time getting volunteers, um, which is key. And it is, yes, yeah, the first year of the program, but you know, maybe we as a, as a parent group here at Madison should should think about, you know, trying to expand that to have people outside the school, like, like with any student. It was brought up, I think it was brought up at the police chief meeting um, last week about hiring security people. So, sorry to mix the stories. So, but security yeah. people are just for inside, or how, how far are they going to go? Yeah. The security, how far? Kids sometimes walk into Menchie, that's their uh, second home is not like. You know, they walk into Menchie, they walk into Safeway for Starbucks. You're still 13, you can catch up and drink Starbucks and go anywhere you want. You know, I don't know, it's the training actually, it should be for the kids. Sometime, one time I said, I hope they can make a scene, that like a robbery coming. Like, you know, a scene here and we watch it. That could be, you know, a, a so like doing some role play. Yeah. Role play, you yeah. know, like somebody robbing, and like this person coming, not just maybe stealing my cell phone. When this person come toward me, maybe he gonna kill me, <gasps> maybe he gonna rob me. Just that scaring feeling. Yeah. I don't know what this person. Maybe my cell phone go take my purse, but I don't know what else he gonna do. Yeah. Right. So this those kids, they they don't realize that that's going to happen. Not just my cell phone. It could right. be anything else. Yeah, exactly. Anything else, you know, I don't know, okay, take it, I don't want it, right? But uh, what else? And I tell my daughter sometimes, there's some accident happen in life, whatever you do, you will never forget in your life, till the end, plus whatever you go counseling, you go whatever, if you, if it happened, I hope it didn't happen to anybody here, no kids anywhere in this world, okay? So I, I wish not happen, but if it's happened, you will never forget it in your life. So. Let's prepare for that. Let's protect ourselves before that happens. An accident happened one time in the life. Yeah. You know, we don't want to get there. So right. I hope there's some training for those kids that they don't realize that it could happen 
to anybody. Yeah. You know, and they say, yeah, for right. this age, they think they know everything. Mm -hmm. They know everything, and they can protect themselves, and they're powerful. You know, and they are not. They're wise, they're smart, but they don't have the experience. We've been there, we've been 13 and 14 and all this age, we've been there. <coughs> you know, so that's the training for them, like, you know, Oh, you know, walk against the traffic, for example. No headphone. Like, you talk to them like, because of the head, like, huh? They will tell you. Like, they would not pay attention. You have to pay attention. You don't know who, who's around you. It, it, absolutely. And one of the things that we do want to offer is um, coming back and actually talking with, you know, the students, maybe a student assembly or something like that, about safety. You know, how to be safe out there. Uh, you know, the things that they need to keep in mind. And, you know, stressing the importance of reporting the stuff. But yes, yeah, coming back to doing something specifically for, you know, yeah. you know, we definitely are on board with that. We want to do that. So anytime, we'll be here. Um, and the primary thing is what we're concerned about is people's safety. You know, you are more important than your stuff. Okay? You can always get more stuff. You can't get another you. You know, if someone is willing to hurt you to get that iPad or phone or whatever, the backpack, give to them. Because there's nothing in that thing that can't be replaced. But your safety and your well-being is more important than any physical item. You know, physical item. So, uh, uh, just for, in essence of time, uh, if we can kind of, and you guys can pair together as we get in. So um, Marlon Teeters is here. He is a security supervisor for Parks and Rec. Um, we did have uh, some management students a couple years ago run into some problems at Hiawatha Park. Um, there's been reports of different, you know, uh, not so great activities going on in the parks. The kids want to go and hang out over there. They want to go out with their friends. They want to go hang out at the community center, and we want that to be a safe place. So we wanted to bring Marlon in just to kind of talk about some of the things that you know he recommends from a parks perspective, what kids can do, what they should do when they <coughs> see something going on that's not right, um, and that sort of thing. So, um, Hi, I'm Marlon Peters. I work for Scout Parks. I'm the security supervisor, and um, I just wanted to say something about your your comment. Um, they say that uh, that having a plan of action is the best way to reduce. PTSD if something happens. So talking to your kids or you know ha thinking about what your plan of action is when something happens or if something happens will help you you know deal with it afterwards too. So that's, that's a good that was a good point. Um, let's see. So parks. So parks department. Um, we rely heavily on our neighbors and the police department for enforcement and our neighbors for reporting safety issues or security issues. You know, we have parks uh, staff that are in the parks every day, you know, doing maintenance and that kind of thing, but they are, uh, they don't see everything that you, that everybody see, you know, you all see. So uh, we really rely on, you know, folks like you to, if you notice something, you know, a particularly dark area that, that you know, needs some more lighting or, um, place where the trees have grown down too far and is hiding some parts of the park. We rely on, on uh, people to, citizens to step forward and say, hey, you know, that's, that's kind of a dangerous situation. You know, let, you know, let's let the Parks Department know about that. And we try to, to address those kinds of things. Um, well, how would someone report um, if I'm in a park, any Seattle park, and I see something that may need to be addressed, how would I go around that's a good question. You know, I'm going to leave some cards, so um, uh, you can uh, definitely give me a call. Uh, we have a uh, um, a job order line that you know, we use it internally, but it's also a, a public number, uh, and uh, I can tell it to you right now. But you know, um, uh, but it's on the website, so you can check the website for um, maintenance issues. Parks, uh, Seattle.gov, and then it's slash, slash parks. Um, or, you know, walk into the community center and talk to the staff there, or if you see uh, a maintenance worker, mention it to them. Um, so, it, you know, pretty much any, anybody who works for, for parks can forward that information through the job line and, and make something happen. Uh, 
um, the community center, uh, the parks department uh, just uh, upgraded all of the, or they're in, at the end of a long process of, of uh, updating all of the community centers and public buildings uh, to be key card access uh, equipped. Um, so that allows uh, the Hiawatha Community Center or any community center staff to lock the building down at a push of a button, basically. Um, and that's uh, something that we've done, you know, basically for it, for the ability to have that be a safe place for kids and adults and everybody if there's an incident. officer comes in, uh, you know, there's an incident in the area, and they'll come in or they'll contact the community center and say, you guys need to go into lockdown, much like they, I think they do with the um, schools. <coughs> and then, you know, the, 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 the community center will go through their steps to uh, lock down the building and wait for the all clear. The other um, possibility would be if there was a, a some issue in the area that, that made the, the community center feel like they needed to go into a heightened security. And so that's more of a, a first step before going into a lockdown. They're, they're thinking about lockdown. They're getting all everything prepared. They're notifying people. Um, and then they're ready to go into that lockdown uh, uh, procedure. Um, so as far as coordinating, we look to hear from SPD or, you know, if there's something that is noticeable that is happening, that we're going to react to that. But usually it will be somebody from the police department that notifies us that we need to go into a lockdown. Uh, definitely report the needle. Um, call 911. I think that's, uh, right. that's the first step. And then, uh, you know, if there's, if it's near a community center, let the community center know so they can deal with that, you know, put a cone on it, you know, whatever their policy is, go, you know, if they have to put to pick it up, pick it up. So definitely uh, report that kind of thing. And we want to know about it too. And we want to know if there's um, uh, increased incidence of that kind of thing so that we can start looking at the environment and, you know, are we, is, this, is this a a situation where we need to trim up some trees and, and make place more visible so that uh, police can see it from the street and, and make sure that it's safe. Yeah, so to me, Iowa is great, right? My kids play the ball there and all that. And to me, it's the area around, right? And I was going back, I had a question uh, for the officer. Uh, you know, you go downtown, there's cops on bikes, police officers on bikes. I mean, I know, I know budget's a big thing with, with, with police departments and stuff, but um, even beat cops, you, know, you talk about being present. Hey, what are you doing? You're talking about if you see something. To me, seeing a police officer walking a beat, especially in a neighborhood like that, or on bikes, because that's the, 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 to me, is that something that the police department has budget for or manpower for? Because, you know what, my walk is great, but I mean, there's times I've walked into to Safeway and that entrance on the south end. You guys are vape, kids are vaping and smoking dope as you're walking in, you know, and and these are these are minors, they're not adults. But yet, 500 feet away, you've got the community center that, that you know, so to me it's the area around. It's no different getting in, in Western Village, right? In Western Village is much bigger 
it's actually something we're doing. Oh. <laughs> so we do have uh, bike officers Excellent. that are operating pretty much everywhere, uh, but primarily in and around you know this campus or the, the North Avenue campus, Westwood campus, with our bike officers and hitting those transit corridors. Uh, so yeah, that's yes. something that's already. In place. I've seen it, you know, but I mean, I'm not like I'm there, but that, to me, that is that is a wonderful thing, right? Oh yeah, when you, when you and not we, in a car, rather and we do surprise some people because you know you, you can see a cruiser from a while, you know, you know, from a while away, but all of a sudden here's an officer on a bike and they're right next to you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So again, that is something that has already been implemented in place and looking to expand. to let them know that that's something they do all would like to see. Uh, some of the middle schools have school resource officers you know, assigned to them. Not every school does, uh, but you know, we can see about how we can increase that interaction. And, you know, it's brought up when we were meeting with the Denny folks. You know, we want young people to realize that police officers do care because most police officers are also parents of school-age kids. So, you know, it's like, you know, have that realization that, you know, we care about you because we got someone like you at home. <laughs> I apologize, I came late, so you may have addressed this in the beginning, but I'm assuming that the district and the police department are aware of scheduling when there's early dismissals and things. Yes. But, I, you know, like we, because of conferences, Madison has three on early dismissals that are not um, typical in the district. And so I'm just wondering if... Yeah, if we know about it, that's something that actually gets talked about in roll call. If you know, if we know that there's a school that has an early dismissal, it'll be mentioned. Hey, don't forget, so and so's got an early dismissal today. And on another note, um, as a member of an advisory council, don't forget that every park, um, I believe every park, or at least every community center, Camp Long, assuming Hiawatha, all have advisory councils that you can be a part of, and that can always help with safety and awareness and. Helping motivate block moving, you know, block watches, extending them, you know, starting at your council. Definitely. You know. Question for the Hiawatha Community Center uh, staff because they're probably 
I would assume that they're in communication. I know that, um, you know, I've dealt with, uh, like, Garfield Community Center and Garfield School. You know, those security and, and community centers are, are constantly, you know, they have, they have weekly meetings and they talk about safety. So I wish I could say for sure that that's happening here. I would assume that something is happening. You know, they're, they are definitely communicating. You know, I'm assuming they would. So that, you know, there are some resource materials on the, the bench over there. Uh, there's uh, handouts on student personal safety, uh, general personal safety for everybody, uh, how to report suspicious activity, and there's also some precinct resource lists that are specific to the Southwest Precinct. So if you're trying to get a hold of, I think we even have the number down there for Parks Department Security. Uh, I think school security number is down there as well. So hopefully that could be a resource that uh, you find useful. I'll leave my cards over here. They, they do have the uh, Parks Department website on them. It's pretty um, common. And, and so, you know, you can uh, get a hold of me if you see stuff. You know, feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to talk and, and problem solve with folks about, uh, you know, things that they see in the park and how we can deal with those. Thank you. It's a home that they really know someone. I don't want somebody, you know, a young person going up to a home that they don't know who's in that home. What do you recommend for somebody who's like in the middle of a neighborhood and they don't know? Because, and this goes, but I was, as a child, I was followed and I did. I went to a house because I didn't know where else to go. Yeah. And, it and that, good that, for me, that but I don't know if that's something I should recommend. I mean, that is an option. Um, I would just be cautious about that. I would look at other. Potential places. You know, I mean, if, if, for example, we're talking like, you know, PCC or. But if there is no business. If there's no, yeah. In that case, you know, find the nearest responsible adult. And if that means knocking on the door and explaining, hey, I'm in trouble That's or right. I'm scared, okay. If you want to get in touch with Block Watch around this area, how do you know? I can help facilitate that. And again, um, we are working um, to put together an assembly that's specifically for students. Um, we were looking to do it right at the end of school so that it's like for the summer because we know they're going to be out and about in the summer. So look for that coming soon. Um, we'll get information out there as soon as we know, but that is definitely in the works. You guys can hang out in case other Who's our um, security officer? Is that his? Mm -hmm. his, his role? Um, he was unable to come tonight, so uh, Dr. Gary's going to be able to represent all of the Madison specific questions and safety issues that you guys have. So, do you want to start with questions, or do you have some? I'll do uh, an overview and then Perfect. take questions. I think that'll be most beneficial. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm glad you're here tonight. Safety is, is, is the number one goal at the school, along with obviously enriching your child in the classroom. Several items that I'll go over first will be in-school items, neighborhood items, and any questions you'll have. Some clarification behind or, or surrounding what we do when we see danger at Madison during the school day. Um, two things usually occur. Uh, the one that occurs with probably more frequency than the other is shelter in place versus lockdown. Here is the difference. Um, shelter in place is when there is a safety issue outside of the school. So let's say two blocks down the school, something occurs that can endanger all the students here. We go into shelter in place, which means we put students in the classroom, or if they're in class already, we keep them in class until we hear from school district officials from safety and security, the all clear sign. 
So what occurs during shelter in place? Okay, we get a call from the district. States go into shelter in place. We make um, announcements on the intercom. Clear announcements, shelter in place. Probably about 10 years ago, we had all these codes, but through research and investigating situations that occurred, people tend to forget what the code words are during an emergency. So we just need to plainly tell people this is what's going on. And so we'll say shelter in place. We review this with teachers. At the beginning of the year, throughout the year, Ms. Barbara Mann, our house administrator, is in charge of our uh, safety and security team. All the administrators are on there, custodial staff, and our, and our security specialists uh, be getting the win. So with shelter in place, students remain in the classroom. We instruct them to get away from the windows. Uh, and the classrooms especially, and most of our classrooms have windows on them. So we try to center them in the middle of the room, get them away from the windows or in the back. Um, the students are to remain there, and teachers will be told uh, by a couple of different mechanisms. They'll be told uh, via intercom. If that breaks down, we'll have to call each room by phone. Because the reason why I point this out, earlier in the year we did have a power outage, and our intercom backup support system did not work, so we couldn't say anything via intercom. Uh, we're going to test it out. It's supposed to be fixed by maintenance, so we'll find out. But if everything's working, we do it by intercom and via email. Last but least, by, by phone, when we get the all clear sound or direction from uh, either safety or security or Seattle Police if they show up. Now, lockdown is when you actually have an intruder in the building. So if there's an intruder in the building, then we say lockdown. And at that time, and I'll get back to where the little bit difference is, when lockdown means nobody moves at all, we get them in the most secure place possible at the time. Shelter in place, there's a little more um, leniency. For example, if a parent shows up and we're in shelter in place and this occurred, we were able to, by the administrators or security specialists, we walked each we walked each student outside to the parent. Or if the parent came inside, we went and got that student, brought them to the parent one by one. If it's a lockdown, that can't occur. Everybody has to stay in place. Nobody can move until we're authorized by the Seattle Police or Safety Security Department. We can't let anybody in the building, we can't answer any phone calls, anything of that nature. So it's, it's quite different because it could be, a, when you say lockdown in place, it means there's somebody in the building that could harm our students and staff. Um, after a shelter in place or a lockdown, as soon as we have clearance and we make sure everybody is safe, we will get a robocall out and email as soon as possible. Here's the problem. All the students have cell phones. So you will most likely get a call before we send out a robocall. In the midst of us trying to make sure everybody's safe, a student may call already, and we're in the midst of making sure everybody's accounted for. So we don't have time yet, as of yet, to make that rope. Like a student can instantaneously call in the midst of everybody moving to and fro. We want to get everything settled in place. And we're not going to take an hour to make a robocall, but it may take five minutes after a student does it, if that makes sense. Um, so we will definitely do that along with an email and as well as with a letter informing parents what occurred. Um, as you notice in the West Seattle area, there's been, a, there's been some incidents, like this gentleman said, where various schools have sent letters out to the various communities letting everyone know that there was an intruder or there was a, uh, can I state this, uh, 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 an adult that has bothered a child. And it's happened, uh, this area of West Seattle, 
which I call the uh, West Seattle Madison area, and it's happening down at the South Denny area. And uh, we also send out to that communication to parents. Number two, traffic. Um, we've had some traffic issues surrounding Madison in the morning time. Uh, with more people driving, should be less, but I haven't seen that yet. So we have a lot of people that drop their students off in the morning. We have a lot of students that walk. We don't have as many buses in the past, but yet we still have enough buses where that con makes congestion in the area as well. And so what occurs in the morning time, we don't have an official crosswalk in front of Madison. Um, we're working with several people from the city. Uh, Mr. Doherty, who's, who's one of the gentlemen that's in charge of transportation, and uh, he works with the Department of Transportation for the city. He and Richard Stout from the district came out and they did a visual of the traffic congestion in the morning. So we're looking at several things, striping, uh, working on ebb and flow directions. They're, we're really taking a concentrated review of what we're gonna do. Because because quite frankly in the morning, um, you get a little scary outside because parents are dropping students off um, both ways. Buses are pulling up, students are walking down the street. So for the past, I think, two months now, I've been out there in the morning time uh, making sure that kids are safe. So I will do that, or a representative from the administration will do that. For the remainder that I'm here, we'll have someone out there right in front of the school. We have traffic problems. Uh, actually, in a on a uh, additional routes and additional roads that are not right on front, right on front of Madison. We used to have a, a, a great community team, uh, uh, two, was it a husband and a wife? I can't, uh, right, up on California. They volunteered and every morning they were out there uh, looking at traffic, helping with traffic, helping with students crossing the street on California. They are moving out of town, so we're working on trying to get other uh, either parents or community parent or community members to work on that. Uh, metro bus area. We're also working on congestion at the metro bus stop. Working with Pe Peggy McAvoy, she's the superintendent of operations. One of one of our areas is over transportation, so that we can work with metro. We can work with metro bus drivers because. Some parents in here for students catch the bus. I'm sure you heard. I couldn't get on. The bus just passed us. They had they didn't weren't there weren't enough seats, so the bus just kept going. When I got on, there was nowhere to sit. But we're also trying to work out some of those issues as well. Um, as far as neighborhood, one thing I would state: this is a tremendous neighborhood as far as reporting any type of of, of behavior that is negative in fashion. Best neighborhood I've worked in. I've worked in every area of the district. Um, neighbors call at all times to let us know if they see something uh, that's not in place. Somebody that's not in place, uh, it's, 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 it's tremendous. And I'm very proud that uh, to work here because of just how the community around this, this, this middle school really comes <coughs> forth and treats this as a community school. Um, so in that, in that effort, we're doing a tremendous job working with our neighbors, keeping, keeping our grounds clean. We have a great custodial staff uh, that work the grounds every morning to make sure we don't have any debris or any garbage in the area. So at this time, I'll take any questions or concerns you might have. Yes, sir. Dr. Gary, just to follow up uh, to what I was mentioning, Mark, so do you think it would be beneficial for us to perhaps have someone from the district? Because I know you've been doing what you've been doing in the morning, and somehow as a parent, I feel like be better utilizing your time, and that's more of a safety issue that perhaps the Seattle Police Department can assist us with. Uh, much as we love having you there, I, I, every time I'm here, I'm seeing you there. And but at the same time, um, you know, you're having to take away from other duties to perform that. So is that something that SPD uh, perhaps work with us on? I guess question for you. Well, yeah, question for you. In that, can we get some assistance from you, or at least bring that as a notice to your notice, so we can get some help? Well, exactly, or in the morning. Actually, it has been 
been raised by another member of the community about traffic around the school, and I have forwarded that, uh, you know, those requests for traffic emphasis you know, to our traffic unit. Okay. So they are aware. I mean, our, our goal is not safety. You know, let's get out and get tickets this morning for the presence of the southwest. Right. Okay. A couple of points that are uh, specific points I'll point out. SDOT will conduct traffic studies to determine if any of the following are feasible. Newmark crosswalks at 45th and Hines, all way stop at 45th and Spokane, speed bumps or other traffic calming on 45th between Spokane and Hines. And SDOT will allow community sponsors, including PTSA and parents, to adopt crosswalks and, and install pedestrian flags and flag holders as needed. So there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of good stuff that, that Mr. Jordy and Mr. Stout are reviewing with us so that hopefully by the end of the year, but definitely at the beginning of next year, we'll have a lot uh, of things in place that will help to slow down the traffic and alert parents where drop-offs are and things of that nature. I'd just like to say I catch the bus in the morning and I, I watch those parents walk the kids across California which when the morning when it's dark and they all get off of the bus, I, it's just, uh, it's been so wonderful to see so I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that they're moving and I, I really hope uh, that, that there is a way to bring other other volunteers, just uh, other people to do that because it's it is a fantastic so bad. Job. Fantastic. Yes. Um, I just started dropping my kids off in the parking lot here in the morning, and I noticed that you come in and everybody comes right, and then you can either go all the way around or there's that middle lane. And I'm just wondering if you could put cones there because I feel like if people are trying to like cut through, and, they, and then kids are walking across the street there, and it's just a little bit trouble. So yes. I thought that might be it. We've been, we've been looking at that as well, and for parents that uh, want a little more information, right in, right where the gym is, and parents pull in there to drop their child off and do a little half circle to get out. There's actually three lanes, so the middle lane, people are starting to cut other people off. So that's mm -hmm. another point of interest where we want to definitely, because somebody could get in an, an accident in there as well. Even though <coughs> we're driving slower, it really doesn't make a difference when you get yeah. hit. If you get hit in the right place, yeah. Right. There's even yes. teachers that yes. they get into yeah, school. Right. Yeah. It's, it's pretty congested. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's two parts to this question. The first one is, what's the earliest that people are dropping children off at Madison? I would say the early birds probably are here about between 7 to 7, 15. The reason I asked is because I've been doing some substituting down at Denny, so it may be more towards you, sir, or, but um, I learned from some people that there are parents dropping their children off at 6 a.m. there. And I have not been there at 6 a.m., and I will not be there at 6 a.m. To, to find out for myself. But things like that, if that really is happening, I'm almost wondering if that's not something in regards to safety and it becoming a different style of hangout. If parents really need to do that to get to their job, if that kind of activity can't be taken back to the neighborhood and Department of Neighborhoods to be saying, is there an area in their neighborhood that could take and step up and help out so it's not happening at the school level? Or maybe it's appropriate that then they go safely into the school building and that becomes their, their shelter, their, their safety. I'm not sure, but it just brought up like, maybe, it just made me think that, well, hey, there's a real cool place to hang out. You know, nobody's really paying attention. I think they are there, but I just, I was really surprised that parents were doing this. It's the first I'd heard of it. And I was just wondering, is that typical behavior at other schools? And if that was, is there something that we can do to take it back into the community to say, look, we've got to support our kids and give them a better place, get them into a community center, you know, and then bring them over to the school because then there might be a better way to track everything. I mean, you've got it down. You've got Southwest right by Denny. We've got Hiawatha here. 
But I just hope that those discussions are happening if we're finding kids that are being dropped off way before the school's really ready for them, that you know, there are healthy discussions happening in our Department of Neighborhoods and Parks to offer support and reach out. Thank you. We haven't had, we haven't had that, it's not that big of an issue here, but definitely okay. if, if, if children are coming in very early, you want to make sure that they're monitored. And it's an interesting campus because there's places to kind of get lost in there too. This at least feels pretty much Sexually, 